to proceed, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in his glorious book, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسِ وَأَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And from his signs is that he created from yourselves spouses so that you may seek comfort and tranquility in. And he created between you Mawaddatan wa rahma. Mercy. He created between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that there are signs for people who of understanding. Allah Ta'ala was capable of creating us as single sex organisms, asexual, like bacteria or like a virus that we spread without partners with no need of partners, but he created us in pairs and created for us consciousness and feelings and emotions. And he made us into families and families into communities and societies and tribes and nations. And he did not create us all in one single image. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following verse in Surah Al-Rum وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ And from his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the range and the difference you have in your languages and in your colours. Indeed, in that there are signs for Al-Alimeen, for those of knowledge, for those who understand and know. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He could have created us all with one color, with one texture of hair, with all the same height, all the same frame. But He is Al-Badi' Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He is the wonderful originator, the unprecedented and incomparable inventor. You see, amongst men, the one who invents, but his invention is of one kind. There is no range and diversity. That is a fault and a flaw in that individual. And Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, as-salam, the flawless, he is the one who created from he created the tree into millions of species of trees. And he created the animals, millions of species of animals and of insects. And from man, the one, cre the one creation of man, an endless shade of colors and an endless uh, uh, list of textures of hair and an endless vocabulary and limitless languages and different body shapes, and different sizes, but all are one. And he addressed them all as one. So he said, Ya Bani Adam. And he said, Ya Ayyuhan Nas, O son of Adam, O mankind. Never did he say, Ya Ayyuhal Arab, O Arabs. He didn't say, O Asians, O Africans, O Europeans. Allah Ta'ala addressed mankind as one because they truly are one. And he never selected any race over the other when he addressed them, as we mentioned, except to chastise them as he did with Bani Israel. And he addressed all of mankind, reminding them of their one origin. Ya ayyuhan nasu. إِنَّا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَىٰ O mankind, we created you from a single male and a single female. Then you proliferated and you increased in numbers. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا And we made you into nations and tribes, not so that you can place borders between you, not so that you can discriminate one another, not so that you can... 
so that you can isolate yourselves from one another. He said, لِتَعَارَفُوا So that you may know one another. And through knowing one another, we know Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Then he stated unequivocally the measure of honor in his sight, which is taqwa. God consciousness, piety and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created no inherent superiority for one race over the other. In his farewell sermon, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood and said, Ya ayyuhal nas, ala inna rabbakum wahid wa inna abakum wahid. O oh people, indeed your Lord is one and your father is one. Ala la fadla li arabiyin ala a'jami. Indeed, there is no superiority for an Arab over a non-Arab. Wala li ajamiyin ala arabi. Or for a non-Arab over an Arab. Wala li ahmar ala aswad. Wala aswad ala ahmar illa bit taqwa. There is no superiority for the red skinned over the black skinned or for the black skinned over the red skinned illa bit taqwa except through piety the superiority which we seek and rank and status and position that we desire is with Allah and that is only attainable through piety through taqwa this is the religion of Allah there is no other rendition or version of Islam that Allah accepts. He completed for us the religion as such. الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as your religion. Any distortion to this religion where a group, where one group considers themselves greater and superior to another due to hereditary physical features which they had no control in, such as height, such as skin tone, such as the texture of your hair, such as the color of your eyes. These, the shape of your nose, the shape of your face, the length of your limbs, these features you had no control over. You did not create them. You did not create yourself. And nobody gave, nobody appointed or assigned any f virtue or superiority for these features over others. Anyone who considers these to be superior has chosen a religion other than Islam. This is not Islam, my dear respected brothers and sisters. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَا فَلَنْ يُقَبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever desires other than Islam as a religion, never will it be accepted from him. And he in the hereafter will be among the losers. How can it then be? <coughs> How can it be that we then elevate our tribe or our culture or our skin color or the like? over another and of course this is not from Islam because it is kibr it is arrogance and pride and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said لَنْ يَدُخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ مِنْ كِبْرِ none shall enter paradise the ones who uh, no one shall enter paradise if he has an atom's weight of arrogance and pride in their heart. Al-kibr or kibriya, pride, is an attribute unique to Allah and to Him alone because He alone is deserving of it and it is necessary to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala for He is Al-Azim, the Great. He is the Al-Kabir, the Magnificent. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the All-Knowing. He is the All-Powerful. He is the Self-Sufficient who relies upon no one and everything relies upon him subhanahu wa ta'ala so he deserves pride and us as human beings our inherent state is that of humility because we are weak 
We are reliant upon others. We are unlearned and unknowledgeable. We do not have knowledge. What we consider to be knowledge is very little. وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And you were granted from knowledge but a little. This is the state of man. So how can this frail creature dare to challenge Allah in his unique attribute of kibr, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or kibriya, where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reports to us on the authority of his Lord that Allah said, قال الله عز وجل الكبرياء ردائي والعظمة إزاري فمن نازعني واحدا منهما قذفته في النار الله says pride is my cloak and greatness is my robe and he who challenges me in respect of either of them I shall cast into the hellfire إبليس عليه لعنة الله may he be cursed he challenged Allah in the attribute of pride. And he said, I am better. He assumed himself to be inherently superior to our father Adam. Allah says, Allah said, Allah said, O oh, Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to that which I created with my hands? Were you arrogant then? Or were you already among the haughty? He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. The first racist who ever existed. Iblis. And he is cursed for that and for his defiance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disobedience of Allah. His words are repeated today by members of every community and of every race and ethnicity. I am better than him. Iblis was created from a different substance to Adam, a substance which Allah did not give any superiority to over clay. So the irony of ironies is that we as humans, all created from clay, some of us consider ourselves superior to those who were created from the exact same substance, who will have the exact same blood group as us, whom we are in need of organs if we need an organ transplant. Yet because of the color of their skin, or the language that they speak, or the shape of their face, or their fr the frame of their body, we say, we are better than them. Our clear belief, our clear belief is that the original sin was not Adam eating from the tree. The original sin was that of Iblis's, caused by his racism. May, may he be cursed. Today people say, Statements such as racism has no place in modern society. Yet our creed stipulates that racism has no place in any society, in any age. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he learn of any racism within his ranks, amongst his followers, he did not leave it until it blew over or they'll just learn to get along. He would nip it in the bud because it's an infectious disease that spreads and destroys communities and eventually the whole society decays because of it. So what happened when Abu Dhar insulted uh, Bilal radiallahu anh, the story that we all know, that they were strategizing for a conquest and the companions differed with Abu Dhar and then Bilal radiallahu an gave his opinion which differed also with Abu Dhar. So Abu Dhar said to him, you as well, you son of a black woman. Like saying to him, you as well, blackie. Even you're piping up and having an opinion. Bilal radiallahu an, he went immediately to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa didn't wait. He called, bring Abu Dhar, bring him. And unlike the norm of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is to give advice in general, 
and to not chastise an individual by his name and not to do so publicly but rather to say Oh, what is it that a people do this? No. He said to him, you, Abu Dhar, you, you are a man within whom there is ignorance. You are a man within whom there is ignorance. And what was the reaction of Abu Dhar, who wished to exercise this, exercise this ignorance and rid himself of it? The, the, the solution is to accept fault and to, humi to humble yourself. So he exceeded what was required of him to accept his fault, humble himself, apologize and ask for, for forgiveness. He exceeded what was ex uh, uh, expected from him, lowered his face to the ground and said, Oh, my brother Bilal, my brother, place your foot on my face that Allah may remove the ignorance from my heart. Bilal, he's not vengeful, radiallahu anh. He's not bitter. So he said to him, may Allah have mercy on you, my brother. I have forgiven you. And then they embraced. That is the solution. The solution is that we accept fault where there is fault. Another example of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ridding his ranks of, of racism or uh, classism is when the mushrikeen, the polytheists of Quraysh came and said to him, Oh Muhammad, we'll sit with you now so you can speak to us about Islam, but get rid of these people. Bilal and Suhaib and, and, uh, 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 Bilal and, Suhaib and uh, Salman and Khabbab and Ibn Mas'ud, these freed slaves and these servants and these people who are lower in class than we are, yes, uh, and from lower tribes, get rid of them. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his heart thought about it for a moment. And Allah revealed to him there and then. وَلَا تَطُرُدِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ And do not send away those who call upon their Lord morning and evening, seeking his countenance. This is our religion, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And there's no religion, there is no other version of it. There is no version where it's okay to, you know, make the joke here and there. It's okay to demean and, and undermine and belittle a, a people here, you know, now and then. No. It is not okay. And even to just say a joke to somebody, not a racist joke. We're talking about any joke, any joke or nickname that they don't like, that they don't like, then that is enough of a sin. And your knowledge that they do not like it means a uh, 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 warrant an immediate, uh, uh, that you immediately desist and stop from calling them that name. Imagine if that name is an insult towards him and his race and his, uh, and his ethnicity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rid our hearts of any ignorance, of any arrogance and pride, so that we are not brothers of the shaitan, rather we are brothers in humanity. We talk about wanting to change the world and eradicating tyranny, oppression and injustice. But have we started by eradicating tyranny and oppression and injustice within our own circle of friends or family or within our communities? The uncomfortable truth which is often concealed and often people are silenced from speaking up against is that within the multi-ethnic Muslim community here in the UK there is systematic racism and it is endemic and rooted within certain cultures more than others but it transcends every ethnicity and every subculture within the Muslim community Ranging, ranging from the outrightly malicious racist insults to the subconscious or the unconscious biases towards people. Examples of which, which will make us uncomfortable to hear 
and will put some people on the spot and make them feel like they are being singled out but must be done is degrading terms towards black people especially or anyone of a dark complexion Kalabundur, black monkey Abd, black slave used by Gulf Arabs and Libyans and Yemenis Azzi, Kahloush, Zaytoun these words, they ring a bell most of us know them some of us has, have used them Cauliflower head, pickaninny, nigger, rubber lips, flat nose, jungle book, jungle animal. These terms. To who? To someone whose skin is darker than yours. That's it. The entirely acceptable jokes about others that have passed, as it was called before, the dinner table test. To say... On a, to say in a movie where millions of people watch in the Arab world to, and make fun of a black person and say to him oh don't let your heart be like your face and people laugh and chuckle whereas within that country there are millions of black Arabs who are and aren't Muslim it's, it's irrelevant of their creed or their creed is irrelevant colorism which exists within all Muslim communities, all, all Muslim communities that occurs from the moment the child is born. Oh, she's too dark. Oh, she's so fair skinned. What effect does that have on the mother and on the family? It ingrains within them that beauty is, a, there's a certain standard for beauty and there is an absolute standard for ugliness. It manifests during marriage choices where men are turned away because they're black or they're too dark. Where girls are turned away because they're too dark as well. If an atom's weight of ignorance or arrogance denies us entry into paradise, what do you think a word will do? The atom's weight of, of, of pride is in the heart. It's concealed. No one can see it but Allah. The person may put on a facade of equality and justice and acceptance for all but Allah knows that he has arrogance in his heart and pride imagine that pride manifests in a swear word manifests in an insult what would that do between him and entering paradise our post-colonial inferiority complexes resulting from decades of degradation and bullying have caused the weak in faith to emulate the practices of the oppressor and, and thereby construct their own race hierarchies where, for example, the white skin will occupy the top rank and the black skin will take the lowest level and between the two we all fight out for our places. A'udhu Billah I seek refuge in Allah from such ignorance and from such arrogance towards others our anti-racism my dear respected brothers and sisters is not rooted in politics it is rooted in our faith it's not woke to be anti-racist or it is not only woke to be anti-racist it is islamic to be anti-racist we are anti-racist because allah has commanded us to be anti-racist not so we can uh, uh, align ourselves with a group or a movement or to please a certain agenda no we do so to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at people's skin and he doesn't look at their height and he doesn't look at their wealth and he doesn't look at their belongings the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna Allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum wa la ila suwarikum indeed Allah does not look at your bodies nor ila suwarikum and the scholars uh, interpreted uh, suwarikum uh, not as images but rather wealth and your belongings but Allah looks at your hearts and looks at your deeds and your actions so the two need to match your deeds are righteous but your heart is arrogant or, your, uh, or the opposite 
and rather the opposite and the opposite only counts for the person who is who was compelled to do so and there is still no excuse you cannot be coerced into being racist we don't believe that different times have different rules oh you know that was a different age they used to say that back in the day no because a constant of the sharia ah is that it is suitable for every age and every place therefore we don't say you know, though they had an excuse then, or these people have an excuse now. The Sharia ah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the same 1400 years ago as it is today. And therefore, we are, we are against this uh, racism and we are against this ignorance towards others, regardless of time and place. So rid yourselves, my dear respected brothers and sisters, when a, of this of this disease which is rotten. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is rotten. So abandon it, leave it, leave it. And we finish with the story of Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj, the two main tribes of Al-Madinah who had fought each other before Islam, a civil war between these two tribes. And then Islam came to them and they embraced it and they became brothers and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam led them to the pleasure of Allah and success in this life and the hereafter. But the evil doers came and said, let us, let us sow discord between them and remind them of their days of war before. So they went to the Aws and reminded them, remember what Al-Khazraj did to you. And they went to Al-Khazraj and said, remember what Al-Aws did to you. So then Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj, Muslims, squared up to each other. And they said, As-Silah silah After they had argued, they said, Khalas, we're weapons, we're going to resort to weapons. Let's go tomorrow and we fight. And when they had lined up to fight each other, news came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he rushed to them and he said to them, Ya Ma'ashar al-Muslimin, Allah, Allah, O oh Muslims, Allah, Allah. Abida'a wal jahiliyya, you call each other with the call of ignorance. Wa ana bayna adhurikum and I am amongst you. Ba'da idh hadakum Allahu ila al-Islam, after Allah had guided you to Islam. Wa akramakum bihi and honored you, dignified you with it. وَقَطَعَ بِهِ عَنْكُمْ أَمْرَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ And he severed your tie with jahiliyya, with ignorance. وَاسْتَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنَ الْكُفْرِ And saved you from disbelief. وَأَلَّفَ, بين وألف بِهِ بَيْنَكُمْ And reconciled between you two. تَرْجِعُونَ إِلَى مَا كُنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ كُفَّارًا You return to what you were upon of disbelief and kufr. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah has saved us from the hellfire through Islam and guided us and honored us and reconciled between us through Islam. Do not do the actions of kufr. Do not perform the actions of Iblis and abandon this religion, which is a religion for everyone and the only religion of justice and the only religion that will equate between mankind. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clean our hearts and rid them of any arrogance and pride and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us humility to accept our faults and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite between us and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to enforce justice again uh, uh, upon ourselves so that we may so that we may spread justice to others